Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone from anywhere you are. Uh, thank you for attending this session about uh, Meta Statistical Database. Um, this is kind of a dream day for me because in 2018, uh, when we talked, we started talking about Mela metrics and what could be done and Mela statistics. This was kind of a big dream that um, it, it was not easy really to get to that day. And uh, it was um, also um, uh, kind of something big that we wanted to accomplish definitely uh, through in the last two or three years since we started talking about this. So this is kind of the, the big day. We, uh, we all here to launch the Meta Statistical Database. Um, uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you for uh, your support during these three years, uh, the past three years, uh, and for all the work that you will be doing actually uh, in, the, um, in the future as well, because from now on, everyone will need to participate in the database. So we will have uh, a robust database that we can rely on in the future for so many projects and uh, promising uh, work that we will need all to do together. Uh, let me share my screen with the presentation <coughs> um, that we will have for today. Um, and let me present. Um, oh, sorry, I think I start from all the way back. Yeah, you will see a lot of charts and so much, but actually this is uh, what we will be talking about today. Um, this is, as, again, the day we will launch the database um, and uh, we will be talking today about um, many of the, uh, the steps that we had and the milestones that we had in the last three years uh, for this project and for the Mela Metrics Group. Um, we will hear today actually from uh, the, uh, a, a very important person for um, uh, SEAL, which is the Council for East Asian Libraries, um, uh, Vicky Fudol, uh, the Chinese and Korean librarian in Kansas University. Uh, she, was, she is actually one of the main figures for the SEAL database. Uh, which we used as a model for building our database for Mela, Mela Statistical Database. Uh, she will be speaking about um, the history for the SEAL database and the, uh, the projects and how they are using it, the impact that it made for uh, so many years since it started. Uh, then we will speak about our goals uh, for this project and why we need to do this now. Um, the steps that we have for building the, data, the database, we will hear from Hisham uh, about the content of the database. Uh, there are two big, pro two big pro uh, uh, parts of this database, which is meta statistics, as well as OCLC data. Uh, we will hear also from uh, Neta about the data entry, how, we, how uh, everyone, uh, when they get access to the database, uh, can um, can enter the data. And also we'll hear from Michael about how to use uh, CSV files in uh, loading CSV files in the database. Um, uh, I think he has an example from Alma uh, system. And then we will have a discussion, open discussion about what is next, next and questions and answers. Um, Vicky uh, kindly agreed to stay with us until the end of the meeting at 2 p.m. So um, if you have any questions uh, from uh, about SEAL and how it, uh, how it worked and how it helped all of them through years, uh, you can also ask her these questions. And uh, with that, I will um, give the floor to um, Vicky. Welcome Vicky to our meeting. And uh, please uh, go ahead and speak and start talking about your, uh, about SEAL database. Thank you. Do you want me to forward the, sli the slides or you uh, will be doing that? Uh, you can do that for me. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Good afternoon and good morning. Congratulations to Mela Statistic Database Committee on your database launch date. I'm honored to present the history and development of the Council on East Asian Libraries Statistics Database on your database birthday. Next, please. The SEAL Statistic Database includes North American 
East Asian libraries and museum collection statistical data from 1869 to present, published from 1957 to present. It is of benefit to seal member libraries to keep separate totals of CJK collection development, public services, staffing, and funding, so each library has a complete record of its development and growth and can use for peer comparison. The scope of the SEAL statistic focuses on Chinese, Japanese, and Korean languages resources, staffing and service to support East Asian studies in North America. Next, please. Here is a 1957 data published in Library Quarterly in 1958-59 by Professor Chen Chen Xun. Professor, next please. Professor Chen Chen Xun is the founder uh, of this uh, database effort, of this uh, data collection effort. He published the first current status of East Asian collection in American libraries from 1958 through 1975, which established the foundation and the tradition of seal statistic collection. Many tax force members of the current status of East Asian collections also worked on data collection from 1970s through 1998. Those were my predecessors for this work. Next, please. This is the 1978-1980 statistics report published in the seal journal under its earlier name, Committee on East Asian Libraries, Association for Asian Studies. And here are some important dates. The next, next uh, please. Here are some important dates for seal statistic development. The database was launched in 2001. So this year is the database 20 years anniversary. Next, please. During 2016 to 2017, many contents and features were added to accommodate online collections. Examples such as streaming videos, online maps, online images, online audio, and uh, customized user input. Also added are electronic resources content counts for e-journal, e-book, and audiovisual databases by subscription to standardize content access by libraries. Pardon? Uh, I'm in the previous one, sorry. Uh, previous. Before also. Yes, this one. So we added all these different contents uh, during 2016 to 2017. Added uh, security, we also added security against hacking because the database was hacked prior to 2017. And between 2001 and 2017, the database had four times programming change and two times server change. It is currently hosted on the University of Kansas server. Next, please. Yes. Keep in mind that data supplied by library members may be based on different methodology, such as gate count, counter, transaction log, or by estimation or sampling. A good estimation is always better than zero. It is important not to have missing libraries. The community's total collection will have a normal variation if a library do not participate consistently. Survey instructions and data interpretation are also very important for data accuracy. Training workshops may be needed with new data categories or new form functions. Next, please. I think this is my last one. So the goals, 
the goals for doing this is to establish a consistent record for your institutional collection development and physical support. This is useful for Title VI or any other grant application, which you have already data collected at any time, uh, at the time since we all doing this annually for our annual report. So why not have a consistent way and collect it in one place? And also this will reflect the status of your whole library community's resources in North America. Anyone who is interested in the collection data can access the information anytime from anywhere. And also the purpose is to be able to access qualitative, um, quantitative data. Okay, the qualitative data is another story, which is my other project, which has not been finished yet because of this project. It is, uh, it is the, the way that you can do, but it's difficult to request members to enter descriptive information than numerical data. It is already difficult. So again, congratulations to your committee's work and happy birthday. I have a lot of uh, uh, examples of how the uh, data analysis report has been done in the past. I had some examples there. So if you have time, you can look at those, but I will not to describe everything now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vicky, uh, for this wonderful introduction about the, uh, the SEAL database, the history for it, and uh, the tips that you uh, shared with us for what to expect from the database and how it could be useful uh, for our community as well. I am now kind of um, browsing through the, uh, the slides, slides that um, Vicky shared. Um, I would be happy to share this presentation uh, with anyone interested after the meeting um, uh, upon request. Um, and again, thank you, Vicky, for uh, being with us today and for staying with us for a probably further questions in the end of the presentation. <clears throat> so, uh, moving again to um, Mela, uh, Mela Statistical Database, um, when we started in 2018, um, thinking about what could be done, there were so many projects actually we had in mind for the first um, group of Mela, Mela Metrics group, uh, talking about collecting resources from um, uh, publishers and numbers from here and there. But we found that actually the most important uh, um, project that we need all to focus on at this stage is to build Mela statistical database. <clears throat> and this was definitely the, uh, the goal from day one for all of us to really establish the database and work on it. Um, to collect and facilitate access to statistical for, statistics for materials in Middle East languages in North Africa. Um, the, the, the why actually aspect of that was definitely to, to enhance knowledge about the extent of Middle East collections in North Africa. Before the database, um, someone needs to stay in Mela community being active and have connections for at least 10 years to know where things are and um, where they can find resources. Uh, who is more into collecting Syriac resources than others in terms of libraries? Whom I need to contact for um, uh, Arabic materials from South Sudan, or for example, South Sudan itself is actually about five years old. Um, so it is kind of that where we um, didn't know where to go. Now, because we have, as you can tell from this year, we have really good number of new librarians joined Mela recently. And this is kind of a very, very important time for them to learn. Definitely, they will need to learn um, the, the connections and all the, the work needed. However, if there's a tool like this available to everyone, they will have, they will have actually a very solid thing to use in, in terms of knowing uh, where to get resources and when to get numbers. I remember when I started in North Carolina uh, as the first Middle Eastern librarian in the library history uh, in 2010, um, the, the library gave me specific funding. And I, as, as I also was first um, uh, uh, Middle East librarian in my life, also I didn't do that job before, I didn't know what to do and what to expect. 
I didn't know how much money is enough and how was not enough. Uh, so I developed the knowledge through the years from connections and so on. And I was very much looking for something like this to tell me what is enough. And now definitely we needed, uh, we needed this database more than ever because of all the collaboration and collaborators that could be actually um, there for us to, uh, to collaborate with and to see who is focusing on what, what are the distinguished collections in specific institutions and probably we can build on that or rely on them in doing something and so on. Um, what is missing and what are the gaps in collections in North America? And then we can focus on this, probably not all of us, but at least one in the East, one in the West to do something together uh, and so on. Uh, to definitely better understand the costs associated with uh, the Middle East resources and also to develop the, um, the, the uh, uh, over time uh, comparison between are we going up or are we going down in terms of spending and collecting and all of this. So it is definitely a very important uh, tool that we need to have and we, uh, it is kind of a probably late uh, for Middle East studies to uh, start thinking about this, but uh, late is better definitely than never. And we are today here to celebrate really the accomplishment that the Millimetrics Group did for this um, uh, database. <clears throat> so um, I'm here sharing uh, just uh, uh, the, the milestone dates that we had for the database. The, data, the Millimetrics Group itself was established in uh, the end of 2018. Um, real work started with contacting OCLC um, uh, to um, collect the information about Middle East resources in North Africa. Anything before 2020 um, that is in OCLC. Um, uh, some of us has access to OCLC, can run those ones, and some of us do not have access to this public, do not have access to OCLC. So um, <clears throat> that's why we we found that having access to OCLC data is crucial to at least say what is for Middle East studies in North Africa before 2019, and then from 2020 we will have our data going forward. It is also up to the community to say let's have OCLC new data, and we can add this, and we can contact. OCLC again to get the new data and add it to the database. That's not a problem. Um, we communicated about this with them and they said yes for this, but definitely we need to sign an agreement every year for that specific purpose. Um, Mela approved funding for the statistic, the statistic database in 2020. And uh, with that, we went for RFP requests for proposals um, in May 2020. We received three proposals. Uh, the the uh, winning proposal was for Hisham Mackey, the um, the IT manager, system manager for Rogers Public Library, and formerly he is the IT manager. He was the IT manager for uh, Library of Congress Cairo office. Um, uh, Hisham had also um, had the uh, kind of a, a competitive price in the, in the content, but also it's not just about price. He had very good knowledge about uh, the Middle East community and Middle East resources and familiar with all the needed work and so on. And to some extent, and to be honest with you, I, um, I have used my relationship with him because I really contact him day and night for things that need to be changed. And he is very kindly doing that all the time. Um, uh, the work started in September 2020. Uh, the beta version of the database was um, ready for January 2021. The final version, uh, we, actually we had some, change, some changes made and we met several times. We also met with uh, uh, the, uh, the East Asian librarian in Duke University speaking about what is in SEAL, so probably we can tweak our database in some way and so on. Uh, so we made the changes through these six months from January to July, and then the final version <clears throat> came in July 2021. Um, it also went through testing from July, July 2021 to September, and finally it was approved by uh, Mela Executive Board and uh, our group in October 2021. Uh, so it is very fresh and ready for usage um, when we um, start 
collecting resources. There are some specific data in the database now uh, collected from uh, the mail image group members in their libraries, including Berkeley, Harvard, uh, North Carolina, uh, Emory University, uh, Duke University, um, uh, and New York uh, University as well. So we have the data that is kind of was for testing and for running the database itself. You can start doing, you can start running the, uh, the reports right now. Um, using this data, but in the future we'll have more. So with that, I will uh, actually give it to Hisham to start speaking about the database, the website, and what is included in that. Hisham, please. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mila. Uh, well, let me start by saying thank you for giving me the opportunity to work with Mila and all, you know, wonderful Mila and what I've learned from Mila that Mila members, you know, speak languages, which is amazing. So let me start by saying, good morning, sabah al khair, shalom alechem, e sabah la, maybe, maybe I'm right or wrong, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so uh, I actually uh, will start to show, show you the, you know, forms and the pages. Um, I will try not to be too technical, uh, but let me just start by saying first, um i have seen you know libraries or library organizations that they sometimes hire someone to do a it project and then the it project can be like too complicated to anybody to continue working with later i mean the background the programming language and things like this so i decided to make this database project as simple as I can and with something called clear code it's like writing the code very readable for anybody who knows PHP or Java uh, no complicated loops or enter loops or things like this uh, although th this would take I mean as page sizes size like including a longer page uh, size in PHP coding but simpler to read so that's a B uh, for entry forms, I used uh, form tools, and form tools is actually open source, like content management system for database forms. It's like um, WordPress, but for forms, like entry forms. And the Mila website is actually WordPress based website. So, uh, I had two options, either to work uh, within the WordPress, but this would have been a bad option because if something happened, then the whole website will be down. And the other option is to work independently than WordPress and work on a different folder or directory and install everything on this directory. And because Mela is like WordPress main site and the people who work with WordPress know that WordPress actually controls the host or web hosters, like completely control the web host. So working in another directory was a little bit tricky, but not impossible. And I, of course, it was not tricky for me. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me just start sharing the screen. If you allow me, share with, okay. You have a screen, sir. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is actually the web, the home page for the Mila statistic. I try to, you know, have consistent theme with the Mila website, the home page for Mila, and use, try to use the same colors and same font sizes and things like this. And uh, for, we have OCS reports and Mila reports. Let's start with Mila reports. Uh, I created actually a menu with it that, you know, will show you four different types of reports, simple reports, advanced filter, pivot report, and charts. Let, we'll, let me just start one by one to let you know the difference between each, okay? This is the simple report. It's just, as it said, the simple report with simple um, filter 
filter uh, technique. Like you can select just one library, a uh, one item from each list. Let's just, for example, choose Harvard and country. Let's say uh, Egypt, and I choose Egypt not because I'm Egyptian, but because Egypt, you know, they publish the most books in Middle East. And then you can just select one language. It's one item from each uh, list. So it's just simple report. But let's say that you need the same simple report, but you need to choose two libraries or two countries for one library or two language or more than just one item in a list. So you can just go to advanced and then click Harvard and another library. And then you can just go and let's say uh, choose Algeria and Egypt, for example. Okay. And you can just, you know, choose Arabic, French, and submit. Okay. This is the report from multiple items selected from the list. So it's like advanced report, but it still shows the simple report uh, view. Okay. And let's go back to pivot. Well, pivot, if, if, if you're good at Excel, you know pivot reports uh, or pivot table, they're more complicated. It's like you need to define rows and columns uh, as like row headers and column headers for the, the data. So this is the uh, page that should report uh, or will report, uh, uh, you know, a pivot report that you select columns. You can deselect, let's say, I don't want materials. I want to add purchase types and languages instead of materials, okay? And uh, I will just put materials back, libraries and countries. This means the rows will show libraries and countries and the columns will show languages and materials. And then you can define criteria like you want countries equal, let's say Egypt and uh, years greater than or equal 2010 and then value field like you want the, the table to show values on number of uh, like sum or total number of volumes or sum or total amount of pay paid amounts so let's i will choose volumes and then show report this is the pivot report as you see you know rows shows the library and then country and then uh, columns, uh, languages, and after, uh, and then material type. So, and it shows the percentage, you know, this like 82% of all data for University of North Carolina, you know, according to criteria. And this, this is the pivot report that can, you know, if you, if you would like to have more information on a precise uh, data, you can just go to uh, pivot report and choose uh, from criteria exactly the keywords or the data you want to search for. And then we have charts. It's actually another pivot report, but because charts can be complicated enough uh, so I uh, decided to make a special menu for pivot report and make the pivot reports simpler to, to make the charts more understandable. You know, uh, once again, if you're creating charts in Excel, for example, uh, then you know how charts can be really complicated and sometimes misleading. So the data should be simple to show a perfect uh, chart. Same thing, display field, you know, criteria, countries, Egypt, and years greater than or equal to 2010, 
and value field and then show report. This is the, the chart that gives you uh, the information you need in charts for, for which and for OCLC we have the same reports but OCLC they have huge and massive data set that is saved on a different uh, data table in the physical database on the server. Uh, this actually required by Mela that they want to separate both databases. They don't want them to be one database and they also need to to that anybody can have access to CLC data should be uh, grant or permitted to use uh, to see your CLC data. Only uh, an OC an email administrator can create OCLC data accounts. Uh, so I, I created a account for OCLC for a test library using my I have to apologize today, my brain and my tongue, they're not well connected. Most probably because I had bad coffee this morning, so like I ruined my day. But anyway, this is the OCLC uh, terms and condition. And anyone, anyone who would love to, would like to see the data or access the data should agree on the terms and conditions. And then click submit. Same thing, CLC data, simple reports, advanced reports for multi select uh, for the simple report, multi, multi select items for single uh, simple reports. Um, sorry, for simple reports filtering and pivot report. Same thing, but uh, OCLC, once again, data, they're huge, they're massive. There were like hundreds of thousands of records, which is great for testing as a database, you know, developer. I, I really needed this amount of data. I need to test speed and integrity of the database, security and everything. So that was like, I just limited, you know, the search. Sorry, this is another tab. Yes, you fields on holdings and record, and not on um, uh, paid amounts because OCLC they don't have paid amounts. Okay, let me just years greater than or equal to 2010 and show. This is the pivot report from OCLC according to the, you know, criteria I added. It's identical to Mila reports, but searches a different data set, uh, which is, once again, that was a requ requirement by uh, Mila members. And, one last thing, let's show you how to enter or the entry forms. This is the um, uh, form tools uh, homepage. And once again, form tools is just like WordPress. It's highly customizable, but there are, there is um, agreement to use if it's, it's, it's customizable, but there is, there is agreement that we should follow. So we can't, um, Although I can totally make a different homepage, but according to the license, we people need to know that they work on form tools. It's not like something I created from scratch. And the good thing about form tools, once again, it's highly supported and you can find documentation and things like this, just like WordPress and anybody with like basic knowledge of P, uh, PHP, coding language can actually uh, log into Mila's administrator and make whatever changes they want to do. Just 
think of WordPress, you know, the, but for database entry forms. to login this is the login page you know uh, data entry view there is no data as a test library now we are two views librarian or inputter I'm gonna input uh, data so let's add a record and the form is so simple and once again the, the simple entry form was actually required by me. I would say just it was required by Dr. Hamid uh, and he stressed like we need a simpler form ever. No fancy forms or difficult forms or multi-step forms. So like one step, one form and that's it. So Hisham, Hisham, uh, let me just inter uh, interrupt here for a minute. Um, um, this is great definitely to show the, uh, the data inputting here. Um, but I think Neda will be actually talking about uh, inputting data from her perspective as a librarian. Um, uh, it's uh, uh, probably more beneficial to see how the librarian is actually doing this, not the developer. You know all the steps and all the techniques about everything. So let us hear from uh, from Neda about what she is doing. But if you are, if you want to say anything else before we move to Neda, please do. Yeah, just two things. First, I'm glad that you stopped me because yeah, I can just keep talking forever, especially about this project. And uh, thank you very much, Khade uh, Hafez, if if I'm saying it right. Yes, that's right. Thank, <laughs> thank you so you. much, Hisham. Thank you. Great. You can now stop sharing and Neda will start. Can you stop sharing, Hisham? Thank you. Hi, everyone. I just want to say thank you to Hisham for his willingness to help me for the presentation for my part. Uh, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, again. Thank you for joining us today. As uh, Mohammed mentioned uh, earlier, there are two different ways to add data, to enter your data into the system. One would be the uh, single data entry and the other one would be importing CSV file to the uh, database. Uh, today in this presentation, I want to show you how you can add the, your data the single way to Meli statistic database. Uh, the first step would be log in with your username and password. Uh, after successful login, you can click on view on the submission tab to go to the main table of inter data. Please note that you can just see your library's records, but not others' library's uh, reports uh, records uh, in this page. If you want to add a new record, you can easily click on add bottom. Uh, again, please take to consideration that for putting data, you should be logged in as an inputter, but not as a in a librarian role. Here you should, all, you should uh, fill all the required fields, material, type, medium, country, purchase status, and the year. And then you can uh, click on save button. Uh, to add a new record, uh, you have to click uh, uh, back, to the, you can uh, save what, you can click on the save button. If you wanna go back to the main table, you have to click back to the search results. You can also edit or delete any saved data and records that you have entered before. For editing a record from a main table, click on the edit icons on the right side of the screen to edit your records. If you want to delete your records from the main table, select the rows that you are willing to uh, delete and then click the delete button. 
A full instruction on data entry is accessible through the link, data entry instruction link, on the first page of the MELA statistic uh, database. Uh, thank you for at your attention. I will pass it to Michael for uh, CSV uh, importing presentation. Thank you, Nadia. Can you stop your sharing? Michael, do you want me to share the presentation or you, uh, you will take it? Great. Thank you, are muted, Michael. Please, would you on? Yeah, you are fine. Okay, uh, so many of your institutions now use the ALMA system, and we thought we might give a demonstration on how to extract the data for the uh, Mela database using ALMA analytics. So those of you who are familiar will know that you have a choice of going into what's called analytics, and if you have a sign-in to the general ALMA catalog, you have this, uh, this uh, privilege. It's either down here, or if you've used it recently, you can go here. And... Once you go there, um, you can go to the catalog, and I've already prepared a report so that we don't have to go through that. Um, but we, we sorry about that. <clears throat> So um, the criteria are, and, and, the, and the problem with this report was trying to figure out how to link all of these uh, uh, parts of the report together. And as it turns out, the only way to do that in Alma is to go through the item level, which is basically equivalent to the, um, to the volume level. So, uh, and in doing that, you have to go through the fund. So the first thing that is queried upon is, is the fund fiscal period description, the fund expenditure, the number of items per fund, language code, material type, and then the, uh, there's a code, I uh, can't see it there, but for country, place of publication country. So in this, this, this situation, I wanted to um, limit it to the fiscal year period from FY 2000 to FY 2021. And the fund ledger code begins with 415. And what that tells you is that, um, in the Alma system, you have a, a coding for each fund that you use to purchase materials. And 415 stands for the Harvard College Library or the Harvard Faculty of Arts and Sciences. So that limits the what we're gathering, the information that we're gathering to that particular, those particular libraries. And then we wanted to qualify it by uh, language, Arabic, Armenian, Persian, Turkish, and Kurdish. And then we we, we can click on results. And then this is the report that one gets here. So once you have that report, it's very easy to go up here to collect the data in CSV and it exports it. And you can pull it up here. And that's kind of what the raw data looks like. And um, once you have that data, then you can convert it to, uh, well, what you need to do is it, it, you can, um, do the find and replace like an, uh, you do in an Excel file uh, the same way. And so that all the terms in your, in your report, your CDS data matches the terms that are used in the, uh, in the Mela database. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me get out of this. 
And then this is what the data looks like when you um, actually, um, no, sorry, not, not sorry, but. Michael, I don't think we see the uh, the data because you went to another screen, not the oh. same screen that you shared. Okay. Uh, but I think we got the idea. Okay, well, here here is the data after I cleaned it up, the CSV, to make it correspond to the, to the uh, other data. Now, we go to the Milo Statistics database and he sham loaded all of this data from Harvard in there. And this is what it looks like uh, after it's been loaded. Now, if we wanted to look at, um, let's say just Arabic and we wanted uh, the year 2021, we can do that and then that gives us and uh, a list of the information. So we know that in, in, uh, from Algeria, we purchased in 2021, 189 volumes and $4,899. Now, there are certain caveats that you have to take with this data. And one of them is that the, the accurate accuracy of the number of volumes, or which is actually the number of items, depends on how the items are created. So if you have manual entry and you have a one volume work, you're going to automatically create an item which would count that as one item. However, if you have manual entry for a multi-volume work, unless you create all 10 items at the same time, you're, not, you're only gonna get one instead of 10. So it would be more accurate for you to create those. However, when you're doing data loads, which is possible in Alma from vendors, you can specify with the vendor to as part of the data load that you have an item for each particular volume. And then that makes your, your numbers uh, more accurate. Um, serials, in the case of serials, the numbers of pieces, uh, volumes is not accurate because it's just impossible in the system to count every single issue of a journal or a serial or a newspaper. So that you can you know disregard for the most part, but the important thing is the amount of money expended. Um, and finally, since, since MECAP uh, is paid for, since most of us pay for MECAP through a deposit program, that data has to be extracted separately and I just haven't had time to do that, but uh, that, that's why you won't see any, any uh, information for Sudan, South Sudan or Mauritania. And also uh, that's why the serials volumes uh, serials expenditures are somewhat lower than, than shown in the, in the statistics. Um, uh, finally, I wanted to say that our data includes that for the libraries of the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. The other significant Middle Eastern collection is at the Library of the Law School, whose numbers are not included here. And the other thing I wanted to mention was that the earlier Fiscal years that don't show up are not showing the data correctly. I mean, that I extracted, it's, it's not correct. So I have to do some editing and go back. But basically everything from 2011 on, fiscal year 2011 is accurate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. <clears throat> you can stop sharing now. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, with that, uh, the next steps for our project, um, a data collection, um, Mela will be collecting the data and manage it for the future. Um, the, um, after Mela, we, the, the, you will be contacted, Mela members or members from specific libraries, uh, or for libraries, uh, um, uh, members for Mela libraries, uh, will be contacted to create account and then they will have, we will have, uh, more workshops and training for data entry, uh, so we'll know how to enter your data for, for your specific library. 
Um, the, the, each library will have one account and you will not have several accounts for uh, the same library. So for data accuracy, the Mela metrics group will continue for one more year to um, kind of oversee the training and workshops and to work with Hisham if there are any changes and enhancements will need to be happening in the database itself. Um, so Hisham kindly agreed to stay with us for one more year to do um, changes or uh, enhance things that should be in the, in the database. Uh, once we start really getting more data into it and more people using it or more librarians using it. So um, with that, I really have to acknowledge everyone participated in this project, including we're starting from our wonderful colleagues for the Mela Metrics Group, Denise Sufi Gaiborak, Michael Hopper, uh, Neda, uh, Sean, uh, and all the old members of the uh, Metrics Group, and also would need to extend the, um, the acknowledgement and the Recognition to uh, Vicky, Fu, and uh, Zhu Zhu, the librarians for, from SEAL, for being very supportive through the project and for coming today to share their experience with us. Uh, Hisham did a great job in this job. Uh, it is definitely beyond what we had the contract with him. Uh, and uh, finally, definitely the uh, the Mela executive board from the start, uh, Robin Doherty, Dale Correa, the previous um, uh, Mela president, and also Leila Mustafa, definitely William Kobaki and Justin Petrat. They are all, they, they, they really did a great job in, in having the project and supporting the project and paying for it. So um, with that, uh, I will stop sharing and we'll open it for questions. We only unfortunately have just one minute, five minutes for questions. So, um, but we still can go beyond the time. If you can stay, we are happy to do that as well. Hello. Yes, so um, if anyone has a question, please um, speak up or share in the chat. Um, and we can reply to these as they come. Uh, I just want to say real quick, thanks very much, Mohammed. Um, this is extremely exciting. We have been talking about this for so long. We were talking about this at the very first Mela meeting that I ever attended, if Michael remembers, uh, in the 90s. We talked about it year after year after year. And it really, it was the how of doing it that we just, there was a nut we couldn't crack. Um, but I just also for everybody's information, I was poking around in Mela notes um, just to see the record of these t attempts in the minutes. And um, I found that in 1974, uh, Mela actually did publish um, uh, library statistics in the Mesa Bulletin. So we have some information published going back that far and there's probably historical information available in, in other reports elsewhere. So, but thank you very, very much for this. It's terrific. You're welcome, Robin. Thank you so much for your support during the project. Without all the support from the Mail Exotic Board and you particularly, um, William and everyone uh, wouldn't reach that point. Um, I, I submitted a, a question in the chat, but I'll just, I'll just do it verbally too. Um, is there going to be an annual time frame when uh, statistics, you know, supposed to be done. I mean, will we get like a, a deadline that we have to do, have our statistics in by, I don't know, November 1st or sometime? Or is it just whenever you do that? Actually, this is a great question, Andy. Thank you for asking this. Um, uh, it is actually a conversation we have in the Melee Metrics group about the timing for collecting information, collecting data. I think it will be probably a window of three months. Um, we'll start in specific months. Probably we have a call in June or July, the beginning of the fiscal year to say, let's collect that about the previous fiscal year and uh, have that there probably around um, September. So we'll have data before the meeting to show or probably have data before the meeting any point anyone can, can use and so on. So it's kind of still conversation, the dates and times and period and all of that will need to be decided, but we'll give you more information later.
And for Iman's question, yes, Michael answered that. We can have uh, online information, uh, definitely, um, uh, or data about online resources. Um, everything is included in the database itself, but it's kind of a simple report. So you need to select the type of resource that you add the data for, and then you enter whatever you want, and it will be recorded for that specific form or format. <clears throat> So I, if no one else has a question, I have a question for Vicky, if she's still there, um, uh, is kind of how, how actually the data helped the um, CEO librarians to um, do projects collaboratively, um, work together on specific resources or projects or countries or languages and so on. So through the years, you have extensive amount of data that could be used for that. And this is probably something that we also need to look at and work on. Vicky, you are muted, I think. I think people use those statistics a lot in their citation and things, but they didn't really cite as many as they should uh, because I, I can see how many downloads, uh, several hundred downloads at least a month. Um, from just one site. And we have probably three sites have uh, posted uh, complete data. Um, but, uh, so like uh, 20, 2007, we have an uh, East Asian collection published uh, a book and uh, we use the data, have the data uh, presented there um, and other publications, but no collective kind of project but recently, as I mentioned, the uh, 2016, 2017, we, we add electronic resources uh, by subscription list. So all the CJK, uh, several hundreds of them, ebook database and the uh, e-journal database and uh, audiovisual database. And then every library will, uh, will uh, select what they have, which database. And we standardize the database count by module because it's all according to, to the uh, budget you have. So everything is according to your finance system for when we do the statistic. Um, so uh, it, it has been published like four or five years now, the list, a huge list, and what library subscribe to what, and uh, their user can access to how many contents, how many eBooks and how many e-journals that you actually can access. But this doesn't come into your library total holdings. Only the perpetual access, perpetual purchased items are added to your total collection. This is great. Uh, Robin, do you have a question? Uh, no, I just wanted to, to um, sort of answer your question, Mohammed. Um, you know, when I came back from my very first Mela meeting in 1994, and we had talked about this, and I shared my office with, uh, I was at Penn at the time, and I shared my office with the East Asia bibliographer, who Vicky may remember, Carl Kaler um, at University of Pennsylvania. Uh, but in any case, I, I was all on fire and I said, oh, we talked about the statistics project. And he said, well, Seal has been doing it for decades. And he pulled out a printed, uh, the most recent printed issue of the Seal journal and showed me the table in the back because that's how it used to be distributed. It was in, printed in the journal as a table. And then he explained to me, uh, like I said, to answer your question, he said, if I uh, want to make a case for a budget increase, I can take this information. I can say, well, look at the University of Hawaii, how much they're spending, you know, and here we are Penn and we're not spending that much. It was that kind of thing. That's exactly how um, the, this data can be used, you know, uh, can make a case for uh, in increasing budgets or saving budgets um, and, uh, you know, for Title VI, as Vicky said, uh, we often need to provide this information and there's just so many ways that it can be used. This is great. Thank you so much, Robin, for the clarification and for adding to the answer. It is already uh, 2 p.m. Uh, we passed the time. If you have questions, I'm happy to stay. 
But if not, thank you everyone for attending the meeting and the uh, launching for the database and uh, look for um, the call for um, uh, having uh, creating your account and having an account with uh, Mela Statistical Database so you can enter your data um, going forward, uh, inshallah, for the future. Thank you all again and um, happy uh, afternoon to everyone in the East Coast and happy rest of the morning for everyone else and happy night actually for others in the rest of the world. Thank you.